Now, they've got microphones and you've got questions. Oh, yes. And I'm being reminded that I didn't say anything all day about the evaluation forms for day two. There's a fresh stack of evaluation forms on your table, and if you're not fast asleep, and I'm not suggesting that anything you heard would have put you to sleep, but um, it would be good if you could fill out, <laughs> if you could fill out those forms in the next yeah. short while. Um, we have time, oh gosh, 15 minutes for questions, and there's a host of information of different kinds here for people who may have some questions for these guys. Uh, there's one here, one. There, let's start with uh, let's start with table 11, then move to table 3, 16 over there. Oh, behind you. This is an unscientific observation, uh, and maybe I'm missing something, but it sounds like what you're saying is okay. We don't know anything about why fisheries are declining, but. We're going to go ahead and start with uh, oil and gas exploration anyway. I don't remember him saying anything about oil and glass, gas, but do you want to comment on that, Robin, or anybody else? Um, you have to press your button so it's, yeah. Oh, no. That was on. Great. I don't think that's a reasonable representation of what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, it was a, it was there is much we comment. don't know about. The structure and function of, uh, of marine ecosystems, uh, and when we go and work with colleagues around the world, we find this lament uh, repeated in other places. There is stuff we do know. Anybody else want to comment on that? Save it. Uh, table 3, I think, is next, and then table 16. Table 3 is up here. Oh, there's two questions. We have a double-barreled question. Or not a double-barreled questioner. I didn't know. There we are. Thanks. Uh, lots of comments on the uh, last two presentations, but I wanted to start with definitions. Um, we all speak English, but the same words can mean vastly different things to uh, professional people, uh, um, bureaucrats, and folks like First Nations, and, uh, which could be called intelligent uh, uh, lay people. Um, so, <clears throat> first question I have is about the BCMCA, the use of the words high conservation value and areas important to human use. Um, a, a definition wasn't provided as to what criteria constitutes high or conservation value. Uh, I think that'd be very useful to know. And then secondly, um, what makes an area important to human use? So I don't know if uh, the high conservation value areas as ones that all those other users groups can recognize some value to, but they see that they can do without it for their fish farms and all that kind of thing. So I think it's important to really clarify what your definitions are. And for the um, uh, fisheries and ocean presentation. Why do we do one at a time? Okay. And, yeah. Okay, sure, I can, I can speak to that. Um, we've uh, sort of got a, in terms of the high conservation value, we've begun with uh, what we feel is sort of a, a broad, simple definition from which we can build. Uh, and so the way that we have it currently defined is um, areas that are important to effectively representing marine biodiversity. And when it, when it comes to the definition of areas that are important to human use, we've sort of taken a different tack. And we've asked user groups and our human use data working group to sort of help us in what that definition would mean to them. And so I don't know that we've come to a final point in those discussions, but it's something that uh, is part of our plan. So it's, it's, it's sort of a conversation that we're having to, to come to um, a definition of what areas that are important to human use means to various user groups. And you had a federal question. Yes, how are you defining hotspot? Is it... Um, areas of high conflict, or is it areas where lots of activity is going on, or some other definition we need to understand? This, these are areas of intense biological activity, concentrations of many species uh, with important parts of their life cycle taking place in a relatively restricted area. It's, it's interesting, just before you go on, how this illustrates, um, and it's been illustrated in other process, terrestrial and marine processes, how you got to agree for purposes of the process on a common language 
before you can uh, before you can communicate very well. Maybe I'll just I'll just add one more thing that um, part of our website includes some of the definitions of, of words like that, so that we can hope to provide some clarity for people who have questions like that. Thanks. Art? Thank you very much, Art Hansen. Uh, first of all, thanks. There was a very useful panel, I think. The uh, question that I have, uh, I guess, relates to the way in which people are still looking at this system. I didn't hear very much at all about how the influence of all those big watersheds uh, links into the ocean. And then secondly, uh, and I guess there's two different perspectives being represented here. One is a perspective out to the 200 mile zone, and the other is a more restrictive perspective of the way Pensima is currently being defined. And, and uh, that's a very important uh, issue. I'm glad that at least somebody is doing something out to the 200 mile limit that would take in Bowie Seamount, would take in uh, transportation routes along the coast and so forth. But I, I feel that it's a bit of a flaw that databases may be uh, put together that uh, in some instances in Pensima at least will probably not take into account that business all the way out to the 200 mile limit. And I guess I'd like to bring it all back to the question that I answered yesterday, and that is I don't see anybody from what is being described up here really trying to look at, e really trying to define what are the critical ecological services. I mean, I'm left at the end of the two days here asking myself the question, if I had to make up a list of the 10 most essential ecological services in this vast area, I don't think I could based on what I've heard so far. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, and those are observations, but they are a question, where is ecological services? And secondly, how to link these big pieces out to the 200 mile limit and up into the water basins? Anybody want to respond to some of that? Please. Okay, uh, let me start. Um, Pinsima and the boundaries out to, uh, Pinsima as defined goes out to the foot of the continental uh, shelf. Um, and that's what we've talked about here. In fact, we are doing programs that go out to the 200 mile limit and beyond the 200 mile limit because some of the fisheries which, some of the fish that form important parts of our fisheries are unaware of the importance of the 200 mile limit and do crazy things like swimming to the North Pacific. So when we do our state of the ocean reporting, we are doing it in a nested fashion starting off with global indicators to basin scale indicators down to whichever chosen geographic scale you want to work at which Pinsema has been chosen and that's really important you cannot do one of these place based analyses without thinking very carefully about the broader framework in which these things are going on you will completely screw it up your understanding of it if you don't do this nested approach uh, watersheds, uh, this is discussed in the ecosystem overview report. Uh, I was telling other people it was controversial in the setting up of Pinsema to draw the map the way it's drawn. This is the only large ocean management area which has lines on the land. The other ones have lines in the ocean only. Uh, so there's more than you think on the terrestrial influence. And ecosystem goods and services is proving to be a challenge uh, that we need to be get working on. Does that do it? Okay. Yeah. Others have commented, you know, just by reference to the maps that you see, that a huge proportion of the area is, is land-based still. Yeah. So it, it has great significance. Anybody else want to respond to any of those questions? Yeah, Russ? Yeah, I guess from our, this, the work that we've done, I guess we're hearing that people are concerned, you know, about changes, you know, from, you know, going back 50, 60 years, um, you know, mainly access to fish, you know, herring, rockfish, abalone, you know, and, you know, whether or not, you know, you've reached some point of no return, it's, you know, with abalone, I mean, I guess they're not rebuilding. So, I mean, maybe, you know, what we had, we have had, an, you know, an effect which, you know, we're not going to recover from, you know, um, rockfish, we know it'll be a long time, you know, before we get back to, you know, kind of, um, so, so I think there are there are signals, I guess, from the work we're saying that you know we have had a, an impact, and, and I don't think that's often being recognized in a lot of the commercial fishery data and things like this. And, I, and I'm hoping that so we we will bring this other kind of information, I guess, to the table and talk about kind of some of those issues. 